Yeah, no, not denying we it. are two days away from the start of the NFL season, and it kicks I'm off posing. with a Super Bowl rematch between the Broncos and Panthers. And the Cam Newton says he isn't looking at this game as a rematch. Take a listen. I really can't wait. Um, you know, we get 60 minutes, and we don't get to see you guys. So, uh, um, and, uh, you know, we're just going to play football. You know, that's what it's all about. You know, a lot of, a lot of people want to make it a rematch. It's not a rematch. You know, it's just a, our next opponent. And, um, you know, they're a great team. We understand that. And uh, we're, we're, we're putting our bid in and being a great team as well. So all that's null and void if we don't prove it on Thursday night. And uh, we're going to have a lot of guys on the, you know, on the Carolina Panthers that will be ready to go, as well as we know that those guys will be ready too. Cam says Thursday night is not a rematch. What approach should he have entering this season in particular, Stephen? It damn sure be, should be this approach that he just had. I can tell you that much. Listen. <clears throat> Let me be very, very clear. Cam Newton is a superstar. I think tier one debate is all about longevity. You got to give me more than one year in order to do that, okay? Coming right up. All right, that's right. That, that, you know, what, bottom line, you got to do that. He, he and I spoke about that, but the point that I'm trying to make to you is this. I don't want to see that attitude. Is it a Super Bowl rematch? Well, I mean, of course it is because they played in the Super Bowl. That's not the attitude that you're supposed to have. But to me, the attitude is, this ain't just another game. This ain't just another season. You lost the Super Bowl. You got pretty smacked around in that Super Bowl. I need you to come out hell-bent on making noise and making amends for what happened. The Carolina Panthers' defense did not lose that Super Bowl. The Carolina Panthers' offense, a bunch of brothers that spent last year dabbing and celebrating and giving footballs to the little kitties in the stands, those were the dudes that didn't show up for the Super Bowl. Those were the dudes that let Von Miller and DeMarcus Ware and the crew run roughshod over them. Those are the dudes that cost the Carolina Panthers a Super Bowl title. So guess what? The defense can sit up there and talk to me about, we just going to approach this like we always approached it. I give that to them because they did their job. That cannot be said for anyone on the Carolina Panthers offense. Nobody that afternoon, they, got, they lost the Super Bowl 24 to 10, okay? They put up 10 points. They were averaging better than 28 last year. These dudes came up grotesquely short. And you've got to make amends for that. So it's not about, oh, my goodness, it's a Super Bowl rematch. It's not about Denver, per se. But it is about having the attitude that says, yo, we are here. We are coming. Opportunity lost. Opportunity denied. We've been, you know, messed up over it all offseason long. We couldn't wait for this season to arrive. That's what I think everybody needs to hear and see from Cam Newton and the Carolina Panthers because as far as I'm concerned, they shouldn't have lost the damn Super Bowl. If your offense shows up and gives you anything, particularly the state of affairs that was going on with Peyton Manning, the Carolina Panthers are sitting here today as the reigning defending Super Bowl champions, but they're not. And it's not just because they lost. It's because they got smacked around and beat up on the offensive side of the ball. They got stuff to make up for. Right. That, to me, should be the attitude they have. So Cam Newton's attitude should be to impress you and other observers. It shouldn't be about what he and the team have to accomplish. Because that's really what he has to do is get himself and the well, team ready. Not prep the fans well, and the media well, to make sure that we watch well, it a Well, let me way. say this. Let me say this to you. They don't have to impress me at all. I don't give a damn whether they impress me or not. I ain't going to lose no sleep over them. But your fans that you're asking to come and pay and see you pet play gonna to pay. support you, yeah, yeah, you kind of need okay. to cater the to them a little bit. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You keep blasting the Carolina offense. Let's not forget, they, they lost two games all of last year, including the regular season. Mm -hmm. And who did they lose to in the Super Bowl? An all-time great defense. And you mentioned the guys that get all after the quarterback, but that's not even what made them an all-time great defense. defense. It's the secondary. It's the fact that they dared Cam Newton to beat him to beat them from the pocket, passing the ball. He didn't have any time and to pass the ball. That's the – well, he didn't have any receivers either. He the, – the running – their best running back is the quarterback. Their best receiver is the tight end last year. This year, he has his top receiver back. He's approaching this like just any other game, which was good enough to go 15-1 and one in the regular season. If you want to criticize Cam Newton legitimately for anything, there's one moment that you can legitimately heap criticism on him for, which he has not addressed, but from all indications, the way he talks about it, he hasn't denied that that was a bad moment either when he didn't jump on the ball after Von Miller I'm stripped him, when they still had a chance to win the game 
in the Super Bowl, in a normal situation, I would say, don't risk injury to dive on that ball. But in the Super Bowl with a game on the line, Cam, dive on the ball. But that's not what this is coming up this weekend. It's not the Super Bowl. In that same situation against the Broncos in week one, if he says that's an awkward position, I might hurt myself there, eh, maybe you don't dive on it. When he says it's not a rematch, the team's personnel has changed. Certainly on the Broncos, there's been change. It's week one. It's not the Super Bowl. He has his top receiver back. The situation's different. His, his approach, that kind of steady Eddie approach, like we're going to worry about what we do, take this one game at a time, this is the most important game because it's the game we have this weekend, that's the way you're supposed to approach it. <sighs> so much to teach you. Let me tell you something, man. Attitude, as you well know, you should know this, matters. Approach matters. Motivation matters. What I'm saying to you is that this notion that that was the loss, it's behind us, it's a new season, and that's all. That's not enough. Let me think about the NFC South for a second here. You got Drew Brees in them, you got the Atlanta Falcons in them, okay? You got Jameis Winston and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We spent some time down there. They're very confident about what they're going to do this year. We got the NFC West with Seattle and Arizona, okay? And say in the Los Angeles Rams to some degree. We've got the NFC North with Jordy Nelson returning back for Aaron Rodgers. We got the NFC East. Somebody got to come out of there. So when you look at it from that perspective, and you're the Carolina Panthers, and you're the reigning NFC champions, and you had the kind of season that they had, they didn't just win. They won loudly. They made noise. They were dabbing. They were celebrating. They were in your face with it. They were on the opposite ends of the sideline, Healthy. humiliating opponents, all of this other stuff. Cats are going to come at them. What I'm saying to you is that they didn't do, hey, Cam Newton's not doing anything wrong, but you're asking me what I would want to see in terms of that attitude, the kind of attitude that I'd want an a, a NFC champion to have, knowing that everybody's coming your way. You got Calvin Benjamin back. That's a big plus. You still got Jonathan Stewart there. In the Super Bowl, your leading receiver was some dude named Corey Brown. Never even heard of him until the damn Super Bowl for crying out loud. No disrespect, Corey, but it's just the truth. The point that I'm trying to make to you is that when you look at it from all of those perspectives, you got to understand cats are coming for you now, and they coming for you in that way, and it would be nice to see a team that wore a lot of its bravado on its sleeve to come out with a similar kind of attitude, you know as opposed to giving the impression that, you know, maybe we just need to be quiet and trying to sneak up on people. Last year was last year, but this year was this you know year. I love? We don't want to do that. I love that uh, mid-20s quarterback, maligned sometimes for his attitude for some reason. I don't know, he signs footballs. And not by, not by me. Wins 50 Not by games. me. Shows more wisdom than a venerable sports writer <laughs> I love that. First of all, <laughs> Cam Newton knows this. You can't win the Super Bowl week one. You also can't go 15 and one week one. And furthermore, it's highly unlikely that they go 15 and one. But the teams that do that, the teams that have outstanding records, are the teams that know you can't do it all in one week. You can't come out here trying to make a stick, trying to cram the whole Super Bowl and, and now the regular season the following year into one game. You have an opponent to play. You got to analyze their strengths and weaknesses. You got to get ready for them. And you got to be the best version of yourself. And if the Carolina Panthers win 12 or 13 games, win their division, and make another run in the mm -hmm. playoffs, that is a hugely successful season. Mm. And if Cam has learned that if that ball is stripped loose Here and the game, game is on the line in the playoffs, that he needs to jump on it, that's the only thing I would correct. Otherwise, yeah. Cam is poised to take over as the best player in the game from Aaron Rodgers. You sound like somebody that wants to be a champion instead of somebody who knows how to be one. Tell me about all your Super Bowl wins. That's what I'm saying. I got a couple. Maybe he's looking at this team <laughs> and couple. he's like, who's this couple. Trevor Simeon cat? This isn't a rematch. This there is Peyton Manning. How about I don't that? know this That clock. is possible. Right. That, is a, that, that is a legitimate point. No but doubt gentlemen. about that. On Monday, President Barack Obama said Colin Kaepernick was exercising his constitutional right not to stand for the national anthem. Meanwhile, Seahawks corner Jeremy Lane, who joined Kaepernick's protest, said he talked to Cap and Colin thanked him for standing behind him. Lane also said he plans to continue to sit for the national anthem. Meanwhile, Kaepernick has one of the top-selling jerseys in the NFL at the moment. So clearly the sales have gone up of late. Max, does the NFL have something to be concerned about now that people are galvanizing behind Cap? They do. Because Kaepernick, the reason he's gaining the kind of support he did, first of all, the president comes out and he's admitted he hasn't followed the situation closely, but he says what's obviously true. He has the right to do this. And even by the NFL rules, 
that who, where they say, you know, we encourage, but we, it's not compulsory. He has the right to do it even by NFL rules, Stephen A. So the president makes that comment. His jersey sales have uh, spiked. They're the, se the second hottest jersey in the NFL right now. Um, there's other athletes are now taking a knee for the national anthem. And then the stated reason is in support of Colin Kaepernick. So he's not out there on an island. And I think the reason people are responding to him is because they see he's being genuine about this. And particularly when you contrast this with the NFL, um, they see on the one hand a genuine person with a concern and on the other a corporate entity yeah. that appears soulless. Let's not forget that John McCain and Jeff Flake released a report in 2015, that's last year, talking about the paid patriotism of the NFL. That many of these military salutes, the NFL was actually getting money from the military. They were receiving it. Uh, any organization, this is a quote from the report, with a genuine interest in honoring service members and deriving public credit as a result should do so at its own expense. Americans deserve the ability to assume that tributes for our men and women in military uniform are genuine displays of nat national pride, which many are, rather than the taxpayer-funded DOD marketing gimmicks gimmicks, paid patriotism. So you have, now the NFL was publicly humiliated into returning money and they were commended for it, yep. but not until it was brought to light. And then they claim, of course, well, they didn't even realize that. that, that. Kaepernick, on the other hand, at great personal risk to his reputation and professional career, took a stand or rather a seat and then a knee. And then as opposed to getting money for his stance, he's now pledged to spend a million dollars to help communities affected by the, by the issue that he is protesting. So the NFL here has been hoist by their own petard. They make this big display of patriotism, which in the past, some of which was paid for, and now they're running up against a genuine person who objects to various components of it, and be, that genuine, that authenticity of Kaepernick is catching on, and now the NFL has a problem indeed. I believe more players will take a knee. But why is that a problem? Well, because the NFL prides itself. It's a, it's, it's a, a largely military sport, roots at West Point. Read Sal Palantonio's excellent book, How Football Descri Explains America, which was a reaction to how soccer explains the world. Uh, it, it has military roots. It's essentially the famous George Carlin skit, a war game. They are very invested in the idea that football is patriotic. You talk about how it's American church on a Sunday. They have tried to own this issue, and now they have been shown by Colin Kaepernick to not be authentic to the extent that he is, that the protest well, is well, authentic. Well, well, here's why I disagree with you, because I think that you're putting a level of onus and responsibility on the NFL that they don't have anything to do with. They're a product of it all. They, the National Football League, the shield that is the NFL, is an American sport. And under the guise of our nation, okay, under the purview of our nation, it's a product that appeals to the masses, and it's the number one sport in the nation in this day and age. So what you were doing, was, meaning the National Football League, is essentially adapting to ingratiating yourself in a culture that was widely and universally accepted. And so because of that, you're not thinking that it's going to be a problem. And if it does become a problem, it's a problem for the nation to discuss, not for the National Football League. The National Football League will continue to make sure the national anthem is played before every game. As long as they don't react to it one way or another in terms of their taking sides and they continue to log, to log along with a level of consistency that they've always done, then I don't see a problem for the National Football League. If individuals expect, it, 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 kneel down or refuse to sing the national anthem or whatever the case may be, that's not a problem for the National Football League to embrace. Not to mention the fact, just like I used the argument on Mike and Mike, that it's a private industry, so they could ultimately decide to institute Here's mandatory. No, I'm not saying they should, but I'm saying if they decided to do that, I can understand how it would be problematic. But if they didn't decide to do that, that's perfectly within their right as well, because it's a private industry. They can simply say we're going to we're going to encourage, but we're not going to enforce. My last point about President Obama saying what he had to say was this. And I'm going to get a little controversial here, but I don't care because it's just how I feel. I don't believe being in China is the place to address this issue. You know, human rights violation and beyond, America is still the greatest country in the world. This is our issue. 
I would have liked it had he been no, on well, the he Beverly Hills. No, he was asked. I know that. I disagree I know because that. he was asked directly, and he's pointing out I agree. that in a free I, and democratic I agree with society, what he said. we can do this. You can't do it no, over no, no, there. No, no, I agree he's with, pointing I, it out. I agree with it there, but we got business to handle with people that we owe more than a trillion dollars to. I'm just sitting there saying that might not be the locale. That's all I'm saying. My preference is that he would have been on American soil. It's just my preference that he would have been on American soil to say what he By the said. Way, but that's it. All right, we'll leave it here. We'll continue yes, this and more. There's much more to say about this. Yes, on Bristol soil. Another Coming day. up next.